Alright, this is our last fair response question for um, unit one, and then we'll get to move on to unit two, which is all about derivatives. Um, and I'm going to use derivatives a little bit in this one because we didn't do it when we were learning it, but um, now that we know it, it makes it easier. So I, I like this problem because it actually uses a, this function means something, and I think all the other ones were just random functions, but on this one, n is the number of fish in a pond t years, um, at time t years, and we do know, um, not a whole lot about f, but one thing we do know is f is continuous, which is gonna be important in a minute, and we know that f of zero is 80. So, let's start off with a, and we're gonna find the limit as t approaches infinity of n. So on these piecewise functions, when we're finding the limit, we have to pick which piece to use. So in this particular one, if t is approaching infinity, it's going to be this last function where the t's are the largest values. this we didn't know about derivatives and so what we would do is we would take the largest power of t in the denominator and divide through by it and then plug in infinity um and we could still do that but i think it's a little easier to use l'hopital's rule um if i put infinity in for both of these t's what i would get would be infinity over infinity so we can say by l'hopital's rule, I can find the derivatives of those, so we still have the limit, but we just go ahead and find the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. Now, if you forget how to spell L'Hopital's, it is L and then hospital. <laughs> All right, and so now there is no t's to plug in infinity, so that just gives you 80 over 0 um, 0.05 and we would divide that and get 1600. All right, and we do need to, that gives you one point. Getting that 1600, the other point comes from explaining the meaning. So what's happening is T is approaching infinity, so the time is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The 1600 should be N, which is the number of fish. So in other words, you would say as time increases, the number of fish approaches 1,600. All right. The next one, we are going to determine if n is continuous at t equals 8. Now, 8 is like a, an endpoint of two of our intervals, and so we want to know if they are connected, and um, that would make it continuous. So we would have to use limits. So we would say we would need to find the limit as t approaches 8 from the left of n of t. All right, and if we're approaching 8 from the left, we are going to use this function. And this function doesn't have anything weird happening in eight, so we can just go ahead and plug in our eight. approach 8 from the right. Alright, and then whenever we're approaching from the right, approaching 8 from the right, we would use this function.
function again. Nothing weird is happening um, at that function when t is 8. So we would just go ahead and plug that in. And this wouldn't be super fun to do um, without a calculator, but I think you would have plenty of time. Um, I'm hopefully going to get a little bit more information soon about the calculator situation on the test. I'll let you guys know what I find out. Alright, and then for continuity, uh, we also need to find n of 8. And whenever t equals 8 because that or equal to we use this function also and we've already done the work i would probably take the time to go ahead and rewrite it because i just i don't know how picky they are about work <laughs> but show them everything you know okay so we have shown that um, the limit as t approaches 8 from the left and right is 350. We also have shown that n of 8 is also 350. So that means that the function is continuous at t equals 8. So let's just jot that down. So because the limit as t approaches 8 of n of t equals n of 8 n is continuous at t equals 8. Now if you write it longer, um, like I did on my sheet that I um, copied for you or posted for you guys, I said that the limit as t approaches 8 from the left of n of t equals the limit as t approaches 8 from the right of n of t equals n of 8. That's fine too. Both of these are fine. Perfect. All right, so that's one point. And then each one of these limits is one point. All right, and then this last problem, um, we want to know, well, it tells us that n is continuous at 6. We know f is a continuous function. Um, is there a time t for um, t between 0 and 6 at which n of t is 250? Now to do this problem, we have to use the intermediate value theorem. Alright, and I'm going to jot it down real quick for you. So the intermediate value theorem states... If a function is continuous on a closed interval from A to B, and if L is any number between of A and F of B, then there must be a value x equals C where A is less than C is less than B such that F of C equals L. Right, that's very, very technical terms, um, but there are a couple of conditions that we have to do. So let's just start off with the con ooh, with the continuous condition. All right, so we need to show that this function is continuous. Now it tells you that uh, the func or on the closed interval. So it tells you that um, the function is continuous um, at six. And it tells you f is a continuous function, um, 0 has a value, so we do know that n is continuous for 0 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 6. So we took care of that one. 
All right, the other thing we need to do is find f of zero and f of six. Now it tells you in the problem that f of zero is 80. Oh, let's not use f, let's use n. All right, and then n of six. All right, so when t equals six, then um, we use this function right here. So we would do 25 times six plus 150. Now, even if that wasn't there, if the or equal had been on the other one, we don't really know f of t, but we know the function is continuous at six. Um, we still could use that one for it because we would know that they would be equal values. All right, that's going to give you 300. All right, then we know, okay, L, L is going to, L is the 250. We need to show that it falls in between those two values that we found, and it does. So we would say that N of 0 is less than 250 is less than N of 6. So then we would need to make sure we mentioned the intermediate value theorem. So by the intermediate value theorem, there must be at least one time for t is between 0 and 6. So there's more than one way to um, word that. You can say on the interval from 0 to 6. There's also ways you can do that. Um, but anyway, such that n of t equals 250. All right. All of the stuff is going to be two points, and you must, to get both your points, you must reference the intermediate value theorem. Alright, that's it for um, unit one. Um, like I've been saying before, make sure you email me if you have a question. I'll try to answer everything, even if it's during spring break. Um, sorry you had to.